3G Mino Autonomic Cephal Jazz are a particular kind and they are defined clinically. So at present time, there is no blood test or no uh, imaging test that can uh, define them. So their first characteristic is that they are unilateral. So the attack is usually on one side of the head for all attacks, and they are usually centered on the frontotemporal area of the head, though they can, the pain can go in other places, uh, for example, in the gum, in the jaw, in the neck, and so on. But they're usually centered around the eye or the temple. What is characteristic of this type of attacks is that they are accompanied by what we call autonomic symptoms. So these symptoms will include um, lacrimations or tearing of the affected eye, uh, redness of the eye, um, uh, ptosis or so fall of the uh, eyelids, some swelling of the face. And uh, they also might come with some degree of agitation of re or restlessness during the attack. A full criteria, of course, can be found on the International Classification website. Once you have defined the trigeminal autonomic cephalgia, so unilateral but autonomic, you have to define which subtype you can be speaking about. Uh, so there are four subtypes, three with individual attacks and one which is a bit of a fluctuating constant pain, which we call hemicrania continua. The most common sort is cluster headache. So cluster headache attacks are defined by a duration of 15 minutes to three hours, and then a frequency of one every two days to eight per day. That's by far the most common common trigeminoautonomic cephalgias. Uh, when we go to the two other sorts, so we have something called paroxysmal hemicrania, um, and attacks will uh, are defined by duration, once again, uh, from 2 to 30 minutes, and the frequency uh, is more than 5 per day. And then we have something extremely rare, where we acro an acronym called SUNCT for short, unilateral, neuralgiform headache with conjunctival injection and tearing, so the acronym is very short, but the definition is very long. And those attacks are extremely short and can go up to uh, more than hundreds per um, per day. Um, among those, for diagnosis, usually it's very important to uh, take a precise history of the duration and frequency of the attacks. And sometimes for patients, it's not that clear. So you might have to do this uh, more than one time and maybe with a headache diary or a precise observation. Uh, so you want to know how the attack starts, how long they are, how frequent they are, what triggers them, when do they occur. And in the case of cluster headaches, sometimes they might have a special um, cycle over the year with bouts or periods that may last a few weeks every year or every other year. And then there is a, another thing that's essential to differen differentiate those tacks is the endometacin response. Paroxysmal hemicrania and hemicrania continua will improve at up to 90% by a trial of the anti-inflammatory endometacin at a high dose given for at least one or two weeks. Um, and this response is part of the diagnostic criteria.